Welcome to the Great Basin Smoke Dispersion Briefing for Wednesday, October 24th. Looking at the precipitation over the last two weeks, it's generally been focused over the eastern two-thirds of the Great Basin, and this precipitation has mainly fallen in the form of rainfall as temperatures have been warm. And the precipitation we have seen across parts of southern Utah, the Arizona Strip, southern Nevada, and even up into southern Idaho has been above normal for the time of year. Looking at the recent snowfall, again, most of the lower elevations have seen rainfall. However, in the very high elevations of central and southern Utah, we have seen some new snowfall over the last 72 hours. The snowpack remains pretty bleak across much of the area with only some snow still remaining in Utah, western Wyoming, and parts of central Idaho. The satellite loop from this morning shows this trough of low pressure over eastern Utah, now moving east into the central Rockies. And again, we'll see dry weather move in behind this trough of low pressure today, as most of the showers will again be off to the east. We do have a stronger area of low pressure well off the west coast, so generally still westerly flow and some cloud cover moving in over the northern half of the area, but otherwise relatively dry conditions today. Looking at the weather pattern for later today, again, we'll see generally westerly flow in the north, with most of this area in green just seeing some mid to high cloud cover today. We may see a few isolated showers up across Idaho, but very light and very isolated with, again, generally just cloud cover across the northern half of the Great Basin. Dispersion will remain quite poor over southern areas where winds will be decreasing and generally moderate in areas further north. Looking at the transport winds for today, you can see generally light to no wind really across much of the southern half of the Great Basin with more light to moderate winds over parts of northern Nevada into central Idaho. Mixing heights will remain quite high over the higher terrain of Utah into southern and central Idaho, and generally lower with valley inversions in other locations. As we move into tomorrow, we do see a ridge of high pressure starting to move in across the Great Basin, so we will continue with warm and dry conditions, where temperatures will be increasing over the next several days, and generally just remain 5 to 10 degrees above normal. Dispersion also remain still generally good over parts of Utah, as we'll see more of north to northwest flow behind the trough of low pressure. However, over the western half of the Great Basin, very light winds and poor dispersion. And again, you can see that reflected in the image on the left, those gusty northwest winds, generally in the higher terrain of Utah and into parts of southwest Wyoming and even into southern Idaho with much lighter winds further west. Also, mixing heights will remain higher over the eastern half of the area and remain fa fairly low over western Nevada and the Sierra. As we move into Friday, we see that area of high pressure start to flatten as that trough of low pressure starts to approach the west coast. We will see some cloud cover move into parts of Idaho and maybe even some showers, especially over the central Idaho mountains, with a little bit better dispersion as that moisture and those breezier winds move in. However, further south over much of Nevada, Utah, and the Arizona Strip, dispersion will remain poor. On Friday, you can see how those winds increase in the north, with gusts generally between about 30 and 35 miles per hour, especially in the higher terrain of central Idaho. And again, mixing heights will remain quite good in the north, but generally be lower further south with much lighter wind flow. Looking at the forecast clearing index for Utah for the next few days, and you can see clearing indices today are low really in all areas with the exception of parts of the Uintas. And then they will increase on Thursday in the higher terrain, especially as those winds increase out of the north and northwest, and then decrease more significantly again on Friday, especially in the lower elevation areas under valley inversions. However, the clearing indices will still remain relatively high over the higher terrain, especially over central and northern Utah mountains. The forecast amount of precipitation, again, not really expecting much of anything, with the exception of possibly towards Friday up into central Idaho as that next area of low pressure starts to move across the region. As we move into the weekend, we will see high pressure return to the Great Basin with warm and dry conditions and generally lighter winds. Therefore, dispersion will remain poor, especially over the southern half of the area and still more in the moderate to high range over parts of northern Utah into Wyoming with breezier northwest winds. As we move into Sunday, we start to see this deeper trough of low pressure off the west coast move into northern California. This will allow winds to start increasing over parts of Idaho into northwest Nevada and also in improve the dispersion, especially across Nevada and Idaho on Sunday, but still remain poor over Utah as that ridge starts to move over the eastern portion of the Great Basin. But still dry weather is expected through the weekend. As we move into Monday, this trough really starts to move across the Great Basin, so we will see cooling temperatures, an increase in winds, and at least some cloud cover, if not a better chance for showers, especially over the eastern half of the region. Moving into Tuesday, we still keep that trough of low pressure generally over the eastern half of the Great Basin, so we will see those showers move a little bit further east into southern eastern Utah on Tuesday, 
and still drier north to northwest winds behind the cold front across much of Nevada and into Idaho, again with continued cooling temperatures. This also opens the door for additional cold fronts to move through from the middle to late of next week. Looking at the precipitation accumulation for days four and five, which really takes us from Saturday through Monday morning, again, very little of anything, only possibly up into central Idaho, we may see some light showers. Looking at the eight to 14 day outlook, taking us into the first week in November, we're looking for below normal temperatures, potentially over the eastern half of the Great Basin, which makes sense looking at the models and some of those additional cold fronts that will eventually drop down from the north, and then a better chance of near to above normal precipitation over the eastern half of the area. However, the far western side of the Great Basin into the Sierra may not quite be affected as much by those cold fronts, so we may see slightly warmer and drier conditions. That concludes our webcast for today. Check back on Friday for the latest updates.